What about um, sharks around Simbad? Because I know there's been some yeah. concern about the treatment of sharks. Well, I mean, that's one of the toughest, uh, toughest programs that we run, really. I mean, sharks are a very important species. They're an apex predator in our ocean ecosystem. Uh, they keep our ocean environment in balance. Um, they are a very endangered animal, so uh, every year about 100 million sharks get killed uh, annually for the shark fin trade on the Asian market, even here on St. Martin. Um, before we put the restrictions in on shark fishery, some sharks were really being killed. The problem with that is that sharks take about you know, 20 to 25 years to, to reach to a maturity where they're able to have uh, young, um, and they only have very few young. So all those things put together you know, result in sharks being some of the most endangered fish in the ocean. There's a lot of talk about um, banning plastics in St. Martin also. How do you feel that's progressing? Well, I mean, I find, you know, as with, as with a few things, St. Martin is now uh, lagging behind within the region. Mm. Um, if you look at the, the, the region, uh, Dominica has banned, St. Lucia has banned, Barbados has banned, uh, Grenada has banned, Jamaica has banned, um, Aruba has banned, uh, Bonet has banned, Sabre is in the process of banning. Uh, and it's just basically being done through a, a decree uh, saying that all single-use plastics, uh, especially those single-use plastic bags that you get at the corner store, uh, plastic straws, styrofoam containers, et cetera, et cetera, uh, just have been completely banned. And people should adapt to, to that ban being in place. And it's something that, that we wholeheartedly agree to. I mean, when we do beach cleanups, uh, when we do underwater cleanups, when we see animals which are injured or in distress uh, are dead and we, we, we do an autopsy on them to or a necropsy on them to figure out what killed them. It's a lot of plastic that they, yeah. that they have ingested that has killed them. Not only that, but you know, within our waters as well, when you have um, sunlight uh, degrading plastic, plastic never disappears, so it stays mm -hmm. within the environment forever. Uh, they get um, ground up into little particles, uh, for example, the fish that we eat consume these particles, and then we in turn uh, consume the fish, uh, and those plastic particles um, uh, are consumed by us in turn. Uh, plastic is a byproduct of petroleum, so it's basically a toxic, uh, toxic product. So if we consume it, we can have you know impotency issues in men, uh, hormonal issues in women. Um, it can cause certain types of cancers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we're really uh, not giving up on pushing uh, both government and parliament to to finally come up with either legislation or through a decree or whatever have you to ban single-use plastic bags because we're really falling uh, falling behind where that's concerned and it's something that is very urgent. When you when you look at Simbad now, how, how long you've been uh, with uh, Nature Foundation? This year, uh, nine years. Nine years. Believe it or not, I can't it, believe it. <laughs> it's amazing. You know, when you look at the amount of work that you all do, and I try to imagine what it would be like without Nature Foundation. Yeah, I mean, we got a little bit of a scare earlier this year, uh, or earlier, uh, when the first budget discussions were going on, and we were not uh, included in the 2019 budget for our subsidy. Mm -hmm. uh, so how it works, in Martin, the St. Martin Nature Foundation has a service level agreement with the Vromi Ministry, and based on that service level agreement, we receive a small subsidy. But that subsidy, it's it's critical because you know it pays our overhead costs, it you know covers our our water and electricity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So when we found out that we might not receive a subsidy, we were a little bit worried that you know it could mean the end of the Nature Foundation, and you know not to make us seem very important, uh, but we do, f you know, we work hard. I mean, I work seven days a week, sometimes 18, 17, 18 hours a day. Uh, you know, sometimes I'm in the field um, together with my colleagues from 7 o'clock until 5 o'clock, and then I still have to go to the office until 10, 11 o'clock to finish up work. So, you know, we were happy to see that uh, that issue now has been resolved, but it did put things into perspective that you know, despite the work that we're doing, the Nature Foundation is still uh, not an organization that can be 
completely secure in terms of, you know, if something happens or if it's decided not to support us anymore. Uh, you know, we do have a staff. I mean, it's four of us in the office. Uh, and uh, yeah, we need to be able to cover our expenses, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, I mean, we continue doing our work. I mean, there have been months and months that myself and my colleagues have, have been without salary because we really believe in the work that we're doing. Uh, we think it's important. We have a passion for it. Uh, but yeah, we can only do so much um, uh, without the necessary support. I must say we have uh, wide scale community support, but you know, uh, we do have to realize that you know it's a tough job. Sometimes it's a thankless job. Mm -hmm. Some people might not understand the work that we're doing, but uh, yeah, we just continue fighting the good fight, so to speak.